truck coming, so we might as well fill it up with a bunch of other stuff going over to Fayetteville. And so now I have two really big machine looking things. They're kind of light, but they're tall, a little fragile. I got three of those molds and two pallets of just boxed goods of some sort. And the machines definitely had to be tarped. The molds technically needed to be tarped, but the guy said it wasn't all that important. And then they didn't care about the boxes. They can sit out open. Uh, so I got a tarp on this thing. It was a pain in the butt to do it because those machines were about six and a half feet tall or whatever. So technically my tarp wasn't, uh, doesn't drop down far enough. So I had to wrap it. I got like a strap going around it to sort of hug it together. And um, basically between the time of getting all the stuff, because they weren't even ready, even though they told me to be there at 8 o'clock sharp, they weren't even ready for everything. So between waiting for them to get all the stuff and getting it onto the truck and then finagling the tarp to get everything, you know, for the most part covered. If you look at the very bottom, there's about a, a foot gap where it's not covered, but there's no electronics or anything right there. And it's sitting up against my headboard, so not a whole lot of uh, wind and rain or anything like that could get in there. But it's not supposed to rain. It's supposed to, as you can see, it's a sunny day and we're an hour and a half away, so we're good. But it was a big of a pain doing all that. Uh, I'm trying to work a little bit of extra cash out of that since, you know, there's more stuff on the truck. I had to use my entire tarp, use the entire truck, and it took about an extra two hours to get all that stuff sorted out before I was out of there. Originally, I was supposed to get there, get one pallet, and go. I mean, that was not going to be hard. So, I'm trying to get a little bit more out of them, and uh, we'll see what happens on that part. Meantime, though, we're going to roll. Uh, I'll find myself something. I was going to have something booked going up to Bowling Green, Kentucky, and uh, that kind of fell through when I've been sitting there for so long because they wanted it delivered the same day, and they closed at 2 up there, so I wasn't able to make it to that, so I canceled that one pretty quickly. I, the moment I learned I was getting more stuff, I canceled that load, uh, and the guy was well, he was thankful that I canceled it. Um, thinking that it might be late. So I gotta start looking for more stuff again. As far as the truck, so fuel wise, it seems to be doing good. I'm guessing I had a plug in the fuel line and it finally worked its way through. Um, I will replace those fuel lines because the lines going from the tanks to the separator are all the original rubber hoses. Everything after that, I believe that's steel braided lines, so I shouldn't have to worry about those. But the rubber, I'll look into changing those since they're probably starting to deteriorate. Deteriorate. Um, and then the fuse blowing on the drop axle. I'm still pretty sure it's a drop axle, but we were not able to get it to blow with the truck running and the axle down. Because so far it always blows when the axle's down. And I jingled every single wire that I could find. I was looking at everything, seeing how they had it ran, and I could not find or force it to blow the fuse. So what I did is it was indeed wired to the key. So anytime the key was on, that lift axle would have power when I could lift the switch to lower it. So I took it off of the ignition, the key, and I just ran a inline fuse straight to the battery. So one of two things is going to happen. It's still going to have an issue, I'm sure. But when it blows the fuse, the lift axle will just automatically raise because it'll lose power to it. And the truck will still be able to drive. It won't blow the fuse going to my ignition switch. So, and that's kind of what I care about right now. If that ignition or the key switch fuse still blows, then I know I got a different problem that's not related to the drop axle. So, I'm hoping that it is a problem with the drop axle, but I don't know. I need to call the people that installed it or the manufacturer to see, especially if it does blow again, to see if um, if they have any idea of what might be causing it and where I might need to look. Because I'm kind of clueless. So, anyways, that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, I'm just going to drive, do the rest of this, and I'll get in touch with you guys again once I figure out where I'm going next. Uh, I'll get there, like I said, around 12 o'clock, hopefully be empty by 12.30, 
and um, that puts me pretty close to Nashville, Chattanooga, and um, Birmingham or Huntsville, something, Alabama, basically close to there. So hopefully I'll be able to get reloaded with something pretty quick and um, have that either to deliver today, who knows, or deliver for tomorrow. So, alright, that's where we're at, and I'll talk to you later. Hey guys, uh, it's the next day. Sorry, it's been kind of a gap and you're just getting another one of these little driving point of views. But um, we're dealing with cheap freight today. I got a load of siding, household siding. Picked it up just outside of Nashville and we're gonna take it down into North Carolina. Um, I forget where it's going, but that's not important right now. Uh, it's not a rate that I like, but it's just barely Good, just barely good. We'll put it at that. Um, but yeah, that's what we're dealing with. A lot of freight right now is really cheap. There's not a lot of stuff moving, so you don't get very many options. And um, I just, I wanted to take something, make a little bit of money, and um, just sort of keep me busy. So that's what we're doing right now. We're on I-40. Uh, we're supposed, we were gonna get there, I was gonna get there at about 9 a.m. tomorrow, 8 to 9 a.m., but I just ran into a whole bunch of traffic in Cross Mill, there was a major accident out there, sat in traffic for about an hour, it was some sort of fatality. By the time I get, got through there, they basically had it cleaned up, there was one car left, um, now I could tell the car was the fatality because it was smashed completely, there wasn't much left of it. And um, so, condolences to the families. Uh, it's, it's a dangerous place out here. But um, 
So that stuff we have on us right now is 18,000 pounds, brag about. And uh, so I'm using the drop axle and it blew the fuse. So luckily it was the fuse I made running off of the battery and not the ignition fuse now. So the truck didn't cut off, I just lost the drop axle. Uh, but it, it blew on the, um, coming off of the freeway when I went to get fuel. Got up to the traffic light, and I think it raised once I was rolling through the traffic light. So I was, again, going slow. Put a new fuse in there, got going, got stuck in the traffic for the accident, and I want to say 20, 30 minutes into sitting in the traffic, it finally popped again. And again, going slow, it popped right when I was letting off the brake and getting ready to roll forward a little bit. And I heard it because I had the window down. I heard the axle raise the moment it did. And I was barely moving, which is a pretty typical thing. I, was, I think out of all the times that it blows on me, I want to say six of the times is right when I get moving, it will pop. So, threw another one in there. It's down and working fine while driving. So, I called the manufacturer for the lift axle. He said the system's super basic. There's not a whole lot to it. He suggested that there's a fuse, or not fuse, a relay in there that I could try changing. I did see the relay. It's a very basic, I think it's a three-prong relay, square three-prong relay. I'll try changing that, see if that does anything. He says, other than that, the only other thing you deal with is the actual solenoid control module for the lift axle. And that's a proprietary unit. It's something that they make. I got a part number for it. Uh, you can get it at Truck Pro. So I don't know how much it is, but that's kind of the last resort. I want to find the wire for the reverse so that it won't auto raise up when I go into reverse. I want to get rid of that if I can. Uh, that's going to be hard to find because he said normally people just tie it into the brake lights or the brake lights, the uh, reverse lights of some sort. So I'll have to look to see where they tied that into um, and see if I can get rid of that. That will at least eliminate another, you know, electrical connection where there could be issues. But anyways, that's where we're at. Uh, I'm gonna keep driving for a little bit more and then we'll uh, call it quits for the night. And uh, I'll try to get you guys something else for the weekend as well, but right now things are pretty slow. So I'm just taking it easy, trying not to get frustrated by it. It's the winter, not much I can do. So anyways, y'all take it easy and I appreciate y'all for watching.